Today we are going to talk about a couple of things of MS test. The first one is how to pass data to a test method. So for example, here if we have int age and string name, and all we are doing is we are checking here assert dot is not null of name. And sr dot r equal age is one. So to do that, what we can do is here we can pass something called data row. And for the data row, we can pass the parameter. So the first one we can for the age we can pass as one. And for the name, we can pass as just string name. Now here the r equal the one should be the first parameter and h should be the second one because the expected is always the first parameter and actual is the second one. The autocomplete just puts it in an opposite way. Now this way what is going to happen is when we are going to run this test method, it's going to pass one for age and name for the string name and then these two tests should be successful. So if I open up the test manager, I go ahead here and run the test and we can see the test method with one and name is passing as expected. Now if you need to pass multiple parameters and let's say here we pass two and then similarly pass one but we pass null for name. So now we can run the test and this will execute this test method three different times with three separate set of parameter. So first one was executed with the first parameter was one and the second parameter is null. The second one is one and name, which was successful. Third one is two and name, which is again unsuccessful because we have a condition here. So this is how we can pass parameters to a particular test method. Now the number of parameters can be anything. I'm showing two, but it can be one, two, 10, any multiple. And this is how we can pass different set of parameters into a test method. We can also pass parameters like array. So for example, if we take an array of age here, and then here we can just use age dot length. And we say, let's say two. So here for first parameter, what we need to do is instead of just one, we need to pass an array. Similarly, here we can pass an array for the past parameter. And let in this case, let's pass two item for the array. And here for this one also, we can pass two item. But in terms of test cases, only the second test case will pass because it has the length of two and the name is not null. The first one length is one. So this condition will fail. For the third one, the length is two, but this is null, so this condition will fail. So the test will behave the same way as before. But here, instead of taking a single integer, we are taking an array of integer. Now what we can do is, here the test method are same, so it's sometimes it might be hard to distinguish between each method if they're taking similar count of parameter. So one thing what we can do for a data row is that, there's a parameter called display name. So we can pass a display name for every item in the data row. So here we can say array count one. Similarly, for this one, we can say display name. Here we can say success. And then third one here, we can say display name of name is now. And if we do that, the advantage is when we are going to run the test and expand, you can see the test now do not have the test one method. Instead, it is showing array count one, name null and success. So it becomes much more easier to understand looking into the output of how the array is going to look like. Now, if we open this project in common prompt, 
and just do dot net test we can execute the same test in a common prompt and here as you can see the name becomes really useful because in the name it says failed name is null failed error account is one so these two tests are failure and if we see the total result we can say failed to past one so this is another way of executing test now this is not only true for ms test it is going to be true for n unit nx unit as well the dot net test is going to run test with any test framework that we are using the next thing i wanted to show is how we can find out when a test method is initialized and when it is teared down so for that what we can do is we can create a method here public void test initialize and here for the test initialize we will use the attribute test initialize so this test initialize method will be called every time a test method is executed so if we have multiple test method here the test initialize will be called multiple times and test initialize is usually used for initializing any object that we might want to use here so for example if we have if we declare uh, integer count is equal to zero here and we can say count is equal to one in the test initialize and here we can always check assert dot r equal and we can say one for the count that is the test we are going to write and then after the test is complete we can create something called public void test cleanup and this method is going to use the attribute test cleanup and this is going to be called every time the test is executed and here we can do count is equal to zero now just to demonstrate that what we can do is we can always do count plus plus at the end of the test but every time the test is executed it should go back to zero and to demonstrate that also i need at least two tests so let me create a test two let's get rid of these and let's just keep the count and here let's add the test method attribute now we have two test method and for the two test method now we are going to have test initialize and test cleanup method now we are doing count plus plus inside of test method but since we will clean up it after the test this will remain always one because this is the initial value that will be set up during initialize so let's run the test now so now if we run the test we can see that test method 2 is successful which shows that it is working as expected and the success is still success because count is still one so during the success condition which is this condition the name is not null the length of age is two and the count is one so this is going to be success that's why you are seeing it success and test method two where we're just executing the count is also success it's because count is set one every time we do the test initialize the other interesting thing that can be used is the ignore attribute and if we use the ignore attribute what is going to happen is the test method is going to be ignored so you can see here test two is ignored that is why it is showing this yellow triangle and it is showing that this test is been skipped because we are using this ignore attribute which can be used to ignore any test and then we can also use priority attribute so priority attribute is used to specify priority of unit test so if we give this one as a first priority and here we come and we give this one as priority of two what is going to happen is this test will take higher priority compared to the first test that we declared here here you can see that this is a priority one test so this covers most of the important features of ms test and how we can use ms test for unit testing c-sharp classes 
These do not cover how to mock because the mocking and verification do not come with the unit test project. For that, we need to use mocking framework like MOQ or fake it easy. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.